Hoff. I'm Vice President of Market Solutions at Avid Technology, and I'm going to give you a, a quick overview of what's new at uh, Avid at, at NAB at 2017. You know, it was just four years ago that Avid brought out the vision of Avid Everywhere uh, as shaped by our CEO and Chairman Luis Hernandez Jr. He made it very clear that uh, there were many acute forces at play in the industry that needed addressing, challenges around the need to create more content faster to be able to distribute it to more outlets and more channels and to be able to compete with all sorts of newcomers that were also seeking to take advantage of the engagement of viewers across all of those various platforms. Part of that vision was also making it an ecosystem that was open and able to be embraced by other vendors in the industry so that finally there'd be a standardized platform for the entire industry to embrace. And the result of that effort is on display here at NAB 2017. So we now have the industry's most open and tightly integrated platform that is populated by Avid's own best and most comprehensive tools, but also the tools of our partners, whether it's an Adobe Premiere integration, or as announced at the show, integration with EVS and their great replay server technology, all of it's coming together on the platform key to the original vision as well was the ability to reach out to aspiring artists, the up-and-comers, the folks who want to learn the tools of the trade and have access to them ideally for free. So our first offering in that area was Pro Tools First, which allowed folks to have access to all of the tools that were needed to be effective uh, sound mixers or music creators uh, for free through Pro Tools First. At this show, we've added the ability to connect into our Avid cloud collaboration for Pro Tools, which means that a uh, person who's, say, doing a big production in a, in a full sound suite wants to add in a guitar lick from some hippie somewhere. They can reach out to this hippie who's not particularly tech and say, hey, why don't you download a copy of Pro Tools First? They download it, they lay down their track, and that has direct session integration back to the facility that's doing the um, recording. That's an example. Also at NAB 2017, we brought out Media Composer First, which just like with Pro Tools First, the idea and vision was to make the tools of the trade available for the next generation of editors to have access to it. Now, their requirements are unique in that they need something that's really easy to use. So we had to strike a balance in making a much more easy to use uh, version of Media Composer, but while retaining the power that has made Media Composer famous. And let's not forget why Avid wants these guys learning Media Composer so that they can then help move into the professional industry trained on the best tools available. So with Media Composer First, which is shipping in June, it's got an easier to use approach. It has a bunch of templated content, uh, templated titles, templated effects, and things like that that really helps a newcomer learn the tools of the trade very quickly. So again, this was a core part of the founding vision of Avid Everywhere four years ago. Also, the idea of resolution independence as a core platform service has been there from the beginning, and we're showing new innovations in this realm as well through our uh, the industry's most complete end-to-end -end 4K workflow. So with this, we are demonstrating uh, 4K ingest and playout technology that is uh, completing the whole path from you know ingest to editing to media management to post, and then all the way back out to playout in 4K. Avid has also been really committed to all the efforts around video over IP and, and has been uh, instrumental with the Ames Alliance in, in developing the new standards that are needing to be embraced. And we understand that uh, there's a very large SDI installed plant there and that you can't just unplug that and immediately go to IP overnight. And so we've been working to work out those bridging technologies that can allow folks to preserve the investments that they've made in their legacy infrastructure while having a wall to the future. And so so we're demonstrating our technologies around uh, video over IP and end workflows on the platform as well. So those are a couple of the, the, the uh, things. I think for uh, Louis uh, Hernandez Jr. in particular, uh, one of the areas that was most gratifying for him was the results of the Avid Customer Association vote. This is again part of the original vision was we wanted to create 
a, a customer association that could have direct input and direct influence on the way we prioritize our feature development and our on our roadmaps. And this finally arrived this year. So starting in December, we began a balloting process and had several rounds of balloting. And the way these ballots, ballots were set up was very clever. It was by discipline, by workflow, by market segment. So you were only seeing the parts of the industry that you were most interested in. And you were able to vote, not just in one round, but in several rounds, as to the areas that you think Avid should be most focused on in the way she chooses to invest her R&D dollars. And so yesterday, in front of a very full house, Dana Rizica, our chief product officer, revealed to the Avid Customer Association across all of those different disciplines, whether it was audio post or enterprise media management, exactly what the top 10 requests were and exactly what the status of Avid's progress against those top 10 requests were in the roadmap. I think of all the things that have been accomplished, that is most gratifying for Lewis and for us at Avid because it's finally really truly giving the customers the ultimate influence on where uh, we're, we're focusing our development. So it's very satisfying for all involved. We know the customers are getting what they want and they're going to likely tell other people, hey, you should be working with Avid, they're listening to me, and we get um, happy and satisfied customers, which is you know priceless for us. So an, another big challenge that content creators are facing is to create engaging content that keeps people coming back for more, that uh, makes a memorable impression uh, and m helps them to bond with their brand, whether it's the distribution brand or the brand of the franchise that is creating the content or the content franchise itself. And one of the easiest ways for content creators to stand out in this day and age is with immersive experiences, immersive video, immersive audio. So on the virtual reality front, Avid has had a number of innovations that we've been doing with partners. So now within Media Composer, through our partner Boris, with their Mocha VR plugin, we now have a thorough virtual reality production pipeline through Media Composer. On the audio front, we announced at the show the imminent availability of Pro Tools and S6 direct integration with Dolby Atmos. Now Dolby Atmos is the ultimate surround sound. I mean not just surround but above, below, etc. experience that creates really highly impactful content for home theaters and in theaters. We now have presented the most thorough integration with Dolby Atmos that's ever existed. And what this means is, it's just that much easier for content creators to create these really enveloping and impactful and engaging pieces of content. So now, what's next for Avid and Avid Everywhere? Well, it, the irony of the Avid Everywhere vision is, is that we are now truly everywhere. As at Avid Connect this year, just before NEB 2017, we announced that Avid Everywhere is now extending to the cloud. And this is very exciting and has benefits for all of our users, whether they're individual artists, creative teams, or the largest of the large media enterprises. So let me talk to you through a little bit about Avid Everywhere in the cloud. So first and foremost, there are four basic char characteristics of Avid's cloud story. The first is hosted applications. And with hosted applications, you have the ability to have either thin clients like Media Central UX or thick clients like Media Composer or Pro Tools available through new cloud-based workflows. I'll return to that in just a minute. You can also take Avid's integrated solutions that um, use maybe some hardware components, et cetera. Those have ability to be brought into cloud-based workflows as well. We then have the infrastructure management layer, which allows for complete flexibility in terms of deployment so that the end users can decide, do I want to deploy uh, on my traditional on-premises? Do I want to pr um, deploy in a private data center, either locally in my facility or elsewhere off, off my premises, or in the public cloud, or as most, is most likely in a hybrid environment, which is sort of a little bit of each as my business dictates, as my workflow um, makes sense. Key to our approach here is uh, the, the fourth item, of course, is the Media Central Cloud UX, which is our new user experience, which is the way that most users will now be interacting with the power of the platform. 
So we think that the cloud future is not something that is all in, where you need to basically reinvent everything that you've done now in a new way in the cloud. We think a far more pragmatic approach for the industry is to look at the investments that they've made to date and look at the way they do their workflows and identify the areas that are most appropriate to migrate to the cloud. It's going to be a journey. It's going to be a pace that the customer can set. It's not something that's going to be dictated for them. So what we also announced just two days ago is our partnership with Microsoft for their great Microsoft Azure Cloud. This was the result of a six-month RFI process where we talked to all of the major cloud providers out there and at the end of it it became very clear to us that Microsoft was the best choice precisely because they are uniquely hybrid in their approach, much like we know the industry needs and much like what Avid wants to do for her customers. So we are now partnered with Microsoft. They have the largest uh, regions, uh, the 38 unique regions, the largest data center footprint on the planet. And those guys actually have more than Google and AWS combined, so great footprint. Also key to our selection of Microsoft was their uh, great uh, credibility around security. These guys are the vendor of choice for the Fortune 500 companies out there. They know how important it is to keep things secure. They have more certifications from industry bodies for content security than anyone else out there, starting with the MPAA, for example. And we knew that security was of utmost concern to customers. So Microsoft is a very key part of our migration of the Avid Everywhere media the central platform to the cloud. And now let me give you a couple examples of what you can do now that you're uh, able to embrace the cloud. First with Media Composer. We have two different ways for you to now use Media Composer with two options that we've announced at the show here, one of which is immediately available. That is the Media Composer Cloud Remote. With that, that's a thick client that can be installed on a laptop, on a desktop, and be anywhere. And editing on your high-res media anywhere it is in the cloud or in another uh, um, MAM or PAM uh, store, and I can be anywhere doing that. As I begin to edit, I start working with proxy res, and if I want, I can have the option of downloading the full res to have locally if I want that. So that's the Media Composer Cloud Remote. We also announced Media Composer Media Composer Cloud VM, which is a virtual machine version of Media Composer that will be available in June. And this is a different sort of approach. It's a thin client where the actual Media Composer is in, uh, installed either uh, in a private data center or in the public cloud. And my media can either be local or it can be also in the cloud, et cetera. It's however I want to work. Now, the benefit here is as if I have a kind of a project shop where I can't necessarily anticipate how much work is going to be coming my way and all of a sudden I have a big project that's come upon me, I can spin up however many seats of Media Composer I need to be, meet the needs of this given project. This gives great burst capability flexibility and we have the ability to track that utilization at the project level so that you can then present the invoice to the customer and say here's the extra capacity that I had to use in order to achieve and deliver the work that you just hired me for. So really good stuff. And now to make all of this really easy to use, we spent a lot of time in the area of enterprise software deployment. And the idea here is, is that you can select the Avid products and services that you think you're going to want to use and selectively install them with one click, which it, again could be done locally on premises or in a private data center or in the cloud. This is the ultimate in flexibility, is absolutely at, at, at its, at its uh, DNA, a uh, hybrid philosophy of approach. And it is really, we think, the perfect pace by which our customers will wish to take their journey to the cloud. So that's a lot of what we're doing uh, with, with Microsoft Azure and with our uh, overall cloud approach. Plenty of other aspects to the story, but I, I think I'll uh, leave it at that.